Hi everybody, um, I'm Rhiannon from the Epsom Bakehouse and today we're going to be doing uh, another Facebook Live talking about day four of how to make a sourdough starter. Um, and I just thought uh, I'd say have, have you had a good Sunday? It's been a busy one here, we've popped out and uh, had some nice lunch out um, and uh, enjoyed the sunshine when it came through. Um, how has how's your Sunday been? Do let me know in the comments and I'll just wait a while to get some people to join you. Um, sorry the light is not great at the moment. can't believe it. it's pretty much dark now at 7.30. I think we're getting to that time of the year. Um, to be honest it is my favourite time of the year. A bit of autumn. I love the run up to Christmas. It'll be my birthday before Christmas as well and uh, it's always a great time of year. So. Um, I'm enjoying cozying up, but I know not everyone enjoys the darker evenings. So, uh, anyway, well, it's been a bus as I say, it's been a busy Sunday, and uh, do let me know in the comments what you've been up to and uh, whether you've baked anything this weekend or you've done anything nice, or maybe you just relaxed, or if you've been at work, maybe you're having a chance to relax now. I certainly hope so. Um, before I get going, I'm going to copy a couple of links into the comments so you can see them. The first one is going to be um, a, uh, a link to my sourdough pages uh, on my website. Um, and it will be a link to the how to make a rye sourdough pages. Um, and that will, that will just have all of the uh, um, amounts and the recipe that I've been using for the last four days. So that you've got that access to that and you can see it and follow it um, and it's split into days one to five um, so let me just pop that let me see if i can pop that in the links do bear with me um, if you have been watching and you've seen any of the other videos, there's been two others before this. Thank you ever so much for watching. Um, it's been great to get all your comments and feedbacks. Um, and if you've been watching the replays, thank you very much. Um, as I say, plenty of comments. It's been great to see so many people watching from so many different parts of the world as well. Um, and hang on. A bit of technology. Here we go. All right. I'm going to pop this in the comments. So there's the link, uh, should be coming up in the comments as to the sourdough pages. So if you've got any, if you want to follow along, if you're watching this on the replay, uh, then you should be able to follow along with that. Um, and that shows you all the different amounts. Um, so to recap what we did already, um, started on Thursday, and we're now on day four um, of making a rye sourdough starter. And on day one, I uh, did a video where we talked about um, what is a starter? What is sourdough? Why would you need to use a sourdough starter? Um, and uh, how you make one and the kind of flour to use and mixing it up and how to store it while it's, you're making it. And um, then on day two, we talked about the first refresh. So that's when you feed it a bit more. Um, and your starter might st you might have started to see some bubbles forming and just a quick video that one um, if you want to catch up if you go on my Facebook page once this is finished to the videos tab I've made a playlist and uh, all the videos in this series are on the playlist uh, it's called how to make a rye sourdough starter so you can watch them all in order at your leisure um, and do let me know if you've got any questions or queries if you're going through those because you're catching up um, that's not a problem. You can contact me via my Facebook page or if you follow that link to my website, there's a contact me form on each page, which you can also use. So day three, um, which was yesterday, I didn't do a, a Facebook Live. I just did some photo updates of how my starter looked and what I added, which was another 25 grams of rye flour and another 50 grams of cool water straight from the tap and mixed it in and left it overnight. Um, so today uh, we're going to be doing a final refresh of uh, my sourdough starter and um, if you've been uh, doing it as well you might think oh actually I've made quite a bit I did say at the beginning start with a larger bowl 
and by the end of day four you'll probably have a, um, about 350 to 375 grams of starter in total if you add up all the amounts you've been adding in obviously you'll be a bit less than the exact total because you've left some on the spoon or there's bits dried up at the side of the bowl etc etc but you've made quite a lot of starter by this point and you can see why we start with such small amounts um, and you could even halve that um, but if you really don't want to make loads and loads um, it's not a problem but you can see how it builds up quite quickly so um, you don't you don't need to uh, think oh when you start gosh this is absolutely nothing um, if you watch the day one video you'll also see why I choose you, I, you know I discuss why I choose rye flour as my sourdough starter and um, part of that is because it's actually a bit more uh, the rye grain itself naturally has more um, yeast on it than say wheat grain so um, I choose that because then uh, you get more, you do get more activity in your uh, starter, and so you don't actually need as much. You'd never need as much uh, rye, uh, rye starter than say a wheat starter. So um, gone through just talking there, and if you're just joining, we're just talking day four of the making how to make a sourdough starter. Um, so we've just gone through there what the videos were on days one to three and they might be um you'll find them in the videos tab uh, of my facebook page so if you do want to catch up go down there so let me give you a look at uh, the sourdough starter today so this is day four and we're going to do a final refresh as i said so let me just uh, turn the camera around so there you can see let's bring that into the light a bit if you see if I just move it gently, all those bubbles stretching. And that's there. So there's plenty of bubbles in there. And unfortunately, I can't get you to smell that. But it's still got a pleasant, fruity smell. It's not overly kind of acidic or acrid. Um, and it's not, you know, it's not... Uh, obviously not gone mouldy or anything like that. So these, uh, if it is very acidic, or the other thing it can smell like is um, nail polish remover, acetone. Um, so you definitely don't want that. Um, you do just want it to have quite a pleasant smell that you don't recoil from. The smell it does actually smell like, uh, it isn't always to everyone's taste. Uh, you know, not everyone likes it, and I'm not saying like, it's my favourite smell, but it's definitely not one that I hate. Um, let me just come back around there. So it, it's not one I hate, but it is a good smell um, in the sense that it means that no one, <laughs> it's not gone mouldy or too acidic, and we'll we'll talk about that in a minute. All right. So um, the other thing that you might have noticed, um, if we're just talking about um, uh, if it's too, uh, if it smells bad or it's gone mouldy, is things to watch out for if it isn't going quite to plan. Um, if you don't have bubbles like that on your starter and you've been doing it for kind of four days now, um, that could be for a couple of reasons. The first one is you might have accidentally contaminated with something, so you do just need to um, you do just need to check that you didn't, you know, it's not ultimately maybe there was a bit of soap or something left in your bowl. I very much doubt it, but you do just need to check that you've not accidentally contaminated it in some way. Um, and uh, make sure you're using kind of, you know, fresh in date flour and things like that. Uh, the other thing you need to uh, think about is the way that a sourdough starter actually um, actually begins to establish so as well as the natural yeast beginning to bubble and give off gas which is what's happened here um, the um, uh, there will also be uh, competing bacteria and most of them are good bacteria if you watch my video from day one I do talk about them a bit there as well they're called lactic acid bacteria um, and they obviously as the name suggests they produce acidic um, acidic compounds um, I'm just trying to see because I can see people liking and things like that, but I can't see whoever's watching. So that's not helpful, is it? <laughs> Let me just see if I can see on my computer. So, but thank you if you are watching. Um, so, yeah, lactic acid bacteria. And uh, they produce compounds that, as it says, is suggested, are acidic. Um, but the form problem is, is that they can often get going as a, as a colony and growth um, much more quickly than your um, 
than your uh, um, your yeast will get going. So um, if you've given them perhaps a bit too much warmth or something like that, your, your bacteria might actually start to take over. And that's when you start to get the um, kind of acetone smell because actually what's happening is they'll start to use up all the um, oxygen and they'll start to uh, produce compounds that give off that smell. So that's when you think, and you might also find then you've got a thin kind of greyish liquid across the top of your sourdough starter rather than all the nice frothy bubbles. So at that point, um, one way to rescue it is to give it a bigger feed, than the, and that's a, a bigger amount of flour and water. You want to dilute down that acidity, so you give the um, yeast a chance to flourish. So if they have got to that point, you could try doing a bigger feed, um, and I would suggest at that point um, doing... Um, say if you take about 10 grams of it and feed it 30 grams flour and 60 grams water and then see the next day see if it's bubbling and then you'll know if you've still got an active and good starter so um that's just one way to think about it so it might not be that you your starter probably hasn't died and there's no don't try not to get too caught up and het up in the fact you might have killed your starter um I'm sure there are pretty big, bigger things to worry about. Um, I can see people joining and I can't see them, but um, if you are watching and do say hello in the comments um, <laughs> and, um, or let me know if you've got any questions at the moment. Um, so, um, yeah, so, so do just uh, try and give it a feed. Don't worry too much about it. You haven't probably killed it. The yeast will still be there and they're pretty resilient. They're not going to die off and be completely um, um, unrescuable so yeah do just try doing that bigger feed and see if you um see if it will come back to bub nice frothy bubbles and a nice pleasant smell all right so um we um the other thing that might happen and um, this happened to some uh, one of my uh, bread making class students recently a bit of a tragedy that um, actually her starter grew mold um, between days four and five of making it which is awful because you're almost at the end and you think you're going to get a usable starter to be honest at that point I'd be starting again because you've probably contaminated even if you can scrape it off it's probably contaminated with that mold and you don't want that growing in your starter so I'm really sorry that is one point when I'd say perhaps start it again um, reasons for that might be that it, it might have been too warm um, or the atmosphere maybe a bit warm and moist um, for the starter or you've just it's just happened you know that's been that spore has been in the air and it's kind of, it's found your starter and thought great source of food I'm going to grow here um, perhaps if it is growing mold or it's it's really taking off with the um, bacteria going much more quickly than the yeast like I was saying perhaps just try it in a slightly cooler environment because it will slow the growth of everything and the, the natural yeast that you want to grow in a colony of will have a little bit more chance to get going. So, um, so that might be one thing to try. Anyway, all right, so let's do this uh, day four fresh. So if you have been watching, you'll, uh, you'll be very familiar with everything that happens now. Um, you might have noticed in the previous videos that I always add the water first. And actually, um, I do that because um, it just makes it easier to stir the flour. And you don't want to make a really stiff cold... Uh, stiff paste if you add all the flour in and then uh, try and add the water in it's just harder to do so um, so don't worry oh. um, anyway so let's try and do that refresh so today like I was just saying earlier in the video um, if you if, uh, if you're just joining I was saying if you add up what we've already added um, plus what we're about to add here you, you're already at kind of 200 odd grams of starter and we're going to add now Instead of previous days where we added 25 grams flour and, and uh, 50 grams water, we're going to double that just because we've got a bigger mix now. We want to make sure it gets a good enough feed right at the end of the process. So today I'm going to add 100 grams of water and then 50 grams of flour. So I'll just grab the water. Let me just turn this around. Pop that in. Just tap water, cool tap water. It should never be hot. Um, that will kill your yeast and bacteria. Anything over about 35 to 37 degrees will st uh, start to kill off your yeast. Just keep an eye on that to get to 100. I'll probably start trying to get your petrol pump onto an exact amount. Never happens. Oh, 
I went to 99 and went back to 100. There we go. 100 grams, stir that in. You can see bubbles coming through. All right. And now I will pop in the 50 grams of flour. So I'm using, as before, the Dove's uh, wholemeal rye flour. And uh, we had a discussion on day one, which you can go back and look at if you want to know, but about flowers. Let's add that in. That really is frothing up, isn't it? Might hear that plane going over. Can we get 50? Again, oh no, 51, never mind. 50, 51, I'll, I'll be good with that. Some of it's gonna get stuck around the side anyway. All right, stir that in. So we'll keep stirring that in. So as you can see, it's a good amount of starter in there now. And for this last refresh, just get all that flour down from the side. So if you have been making it or you've started, why not, if you're watching on a replay, why not give me a picture, send me a picture. How's your starter looking? How's it coming along? Are you getting lots of bubbles? Maybe not. Do, um, if you do, if you're not getting lots of bubbles, like I was just saying, perhaps do a bigger refresh, larger amount of flour and water, not too much but do a little bit more and see if your yeast come back to life, see if it's frothy the next day. All right, so all fed. And so all I'm gonna do is cover that over with my um, trusty shower cap, which with the elastic, it just helps it stay on and keeps, your, uh, keeps it all tucked up. Let me just come back. There we go. So that was day four refresh all done. And um, I've put a link in the uh, comments, which you can go back and look at. Um, and um, uh, and that uh, it has all the uh, recipes from each day um, in the days one to five that we've been following on this. So uh, you can go back and look at that and, um, and have a look and follow the recipes there so do click on the link and uh, you'll you'll find everything you need to know um, along with a lot of the stuff that we've been discussing in these videos all right so um as i said as well as as uh, doing the refresh uh, i said i'd talk a little bit about um some of the questions um that uh, have been received uh, during the facebook lives that i've done already um, so thank you ever so much again, and I'll, uh, I'll have a look through now and uh, give you a couple of answers um, to what I've been doing. So first of all, um, Janet asked, do, if you use different flowers, um, do you get different tastes? Well, the, in short, yes, um, you'll always get different tastes, but if you're using it as a starter, it can actually the taste will actually depend on the final dough that you make up. So it depends on the flowers that you make with the final dough. So with a rye starter, you can often use a very small amount. Like I was saying, it's got a lot of natural yeast in, so you often don't need much to actually rise a loaf of bread. So um, you'll actually, even if you mix it in, it can often be like five to 10 grams in a whole loaf of bread by the end calculation. So if the rest of that bread was uh, wheat flour, it won't really taste like rye. It will taste of wheat, uh, like a wheat loaf. So um, it's a bit of a conundrum there because, um, yeah, you'll get different flavours, but as I say, it depends what you make your final dough with. Um, as I say, I have concentrated on the rye at the moment. Obviously, you can make a wheat starter as well, um, similar amounts, to be honest, um, but with a wheat starter, you do need to have lots of it because generally it's a weaker starter. It has less natural yeast in it. And so in recipes, you'll often see um, in a final dough that the starter might make up, say, half of the final dough. So if you did that and you tried to make a rye bread with a wheat starter, it would actually end up probably being like 50-50. So it wouldn't be 100% rye, you'd actually probably end up making more like a wheat loaf. So um, yeah, there are different tastes. Um, spelt, I haven't made a spelt starter, but um, 
a different taste again. Um, spelt starters can tend to run away a little bit with themselves, so that's one thing to bear in mind. Um, then I also had lots of uh, questions from Paula, and thank you ever so much, Paula. Um, and uh, she asked, um, first of all, should you feed it every day? Does it matter if you go away for a couple of days? Um, my answer would be yes, if you're starting a starter like we've just done over the last five days, generally um, I would suggest feeding it every day. Um, so plan in when you can actually have contact with your starter for a straight row of five days. You know you're going to be able to do it, say, every evening for those five days, just because all your colonies are getting established and it really helps your yeast uh, that are present to... Um, to um, if they're fed every day to kind of compete with the bacteria which might otherwise take over. Um, I think if you did leave your starter if halfway through this process, the days one to five where you're trying to make your starter, um, I think to be honest you'd just be lengthening the time you, you're going to end up doing it because if you leave it to sit, I mean you could put it in your fridge so most of the activity goes dormant in the cold, but um, you're just extending the time it will take to establish your starter. Um, if you've got an established starter, um, then, no, it doesn't matter if you don't feed it every day. Um, what I'll say is I'll do another live on Tuesday at about 4 o'clock, so it's coming Tuesday, um, and we'll talk about storage of your starter and how to use it. But um, the great thing there is once you've got an established colony of um, rye bacteria, no, sorry, uh, yeast, rye, yeast and bacteria in your rye starter, then you can leave it. Um, Paula also asked, would it travel well if you had it, say, you took it on a journey? Um, I know she does travel a lot around the country. Well, uh, yes, uh, it's fine. Um, sourdough is the oldest method of making bread. And uh, sourdough starters have been carried around by people throughout history. Uh, if you think about California, especially San Francisco, is now known for its sourdough. And it's actually been proven that they have their own strain of yeast in the uh, sourdough in San Francisco now um, and but that started because when settlers in the gold rush moved out to to the to the west across America they took their sourdough starters with them usually they dried them that's one way of uh, actually carrying them they dried them popped them in a container um, and off they went and you can revive it at the other end the yeast is incredibly resilient um, and uh, it w once you revive it with some fire and water, it will come back time and again if you've got an established colony in your sourdough starter. So, um, yeah, don't worry about taking your sourdough starter. Um, you might want to think about if you're crossing borders, obviously it is a food substance, but, um, yeah, do, um, don't worry about it travelling and not working at the other end. As long as you can feed it, it'll be fine. Obviously, the one thing you do want to think about if it is liquid is just containing it, so a good sealed jar um, and probably quite dormant, uh, whilst you're travelling. Um, and the last question that um, Paula asked was similar to what Janet asked about using your rye starter in other doughs. And Paula, I'll address that on Tuesday. But yes, absolutely. Your rye starter doesn't just have to make rye bread. In fact, I hardly ever make rye sourdough. Uh, it's just a personal preference. But um, yeah, you definitely don't have to. Um, Another question I had was from Fiona, who was asking about sharing your starter, and what a fantastic idea. It's absolutely meant to be shared if you can, um, and you've just seen we've absolutely made, you know, almost 400 grams of starter now, and you definitely don't need that much to bake with. You should always keep a bit of your starter back. There should always be spare in the fridge. You don't want to have to start this five-day process over again. But, um, yeah, if you want to share it with people, then great. And, in fact, once you have an established rye sourdough starter, um, you can... Um, divvy it up in quite small portions because it's fairly um, potent. So um, you could easily give each person you want to share it with like 10, 10 to 20 grams and, um, um, and then they, um, they can refresh it. So um, and uh, do let me know if you've just joined. As I say, I'm still having still trying to see if people who are, people are watching, which is uh, we were just discussing there. Um, so you could easily um, share some. If, as I said, with the big refresh, if you gave 10 grams of your uh, new sourdough starter to someone, they could refresh it with 60 grams of water, 30 grams flour, and they'll already by then have um, 100 grams um, of a sourdough starter. So um, it's quite easy to divvy up um, and into quite small portions. So don't worry about that. 
I also had several questions over on my uh, Instagram account, and uh, in, my Instagram is at the Epsom Bakehouse if you're on Instagram. Um, and I had lots of questions there as well when I posted about sourdough starters, so I'll answer a few of those now. Um, first from uh, Pyromaniac Chef, who by the way cooks lots of lovely things, um, and I would love to try them. Um, but um, she was asking about whether uh, lots of recipes seem to make you throw away a half your starter when you're trying to build it. Um, and do you have to do that? Well, obviously I haven't. If you watch back the videos, I haven't actually thrown away any of the starter. Um, there's been no need. I've just added to it um, and tried to keep the addi additions minimal so you're not using excess flour. Um, so I try not to waste it. Um, the only thing you might find is, yeah, you end up with quite a lot when you make your own starter. So like I was just saying before, if you want to share it, great. Um, but yeah, there's no need to be kind of throwing half away and refreshing the other half. Um, yeah, it gets a bit complicated as well, and I don't, I don't really like to, <laughs> to waste what I've made. Um, another question, and I'm, I'm going to pronounce this, um, this Instagram handle wrong, I'm really sorry, but it's Amamaya, I think, Adventure Baby, um, who was just asking about the time it takes to make sourdough. Um, is it time consuming? It does seem time consuming. Um, well, yeah, it is, and in some ways, if you looked at it purely like the amount of days it takes, this isn't an instant product. Um, it's not something that you're instantly going to get a loaf of bread out. Like, if you make a yeasted loaf, you'll probably be done by the end of the day. Um, but it's only about five, ten minutes ha um, hands-on time uh, when, you, when you do do it. So um, it's a little bit of planning when you want to start making a starter. Like I was saying before, um, do you... Um, do you have five days where you can come back every day to your starter in the evenings? Maybe do it in a week where you know you're going to be there or over a Thursday to Monday like I've done here. Um, and it's just 10 minutes a day of your time. Um, so I don't think that's too time consuming. And um, I'll talk again on Tuesday about kind of fitting in when you're making uh, doughs around your life. Excuse me. Um, and uh, again, I don't think it's that time consuming. You can do things and leave it. The great thing about sourdough is that it's so slow moving that... You've got quite a lot of leeway when you're making bread. It's not something you need to come back to in a couple of hours and do something else to. You really can leave it for quite a long time. That means you can kind of fit the rest of your day in whilst you're, um, while you're making the bread. So um, it's just a bit of planning. Um, and I can provide uh, kind of time scales of if you're going to make a dough that can fit in around, say, a three or four day period. So... Um, and I also had one last question from at Nutritious Deliciousness, fantastic handle by the way, um, and who said they made a starter before but uh, it went a bit volcanic and erupted everywhere and um, they'd added some fruit. So were there some um, recipes without fruit? Well, I obviously haven't used fruit uh, in this one. And the reason you might use fruit is that obviously it adds, it adds first of all a bit of extra sugar which will be an instant feed to both the yeast but also the bacteria so remember that the bacteria might thrive on that first uh, rather than your yeast um, and um, um, I'm just trying to see oh. who is watching it drives me insane I don't know if anyone else has these problems. <laughs> I feel like a technology failure. Um, sorry, yeah, I was answering a question. Yeah, extra sugar and also maybe some flavour. Um, there is a lot of things. That people saying, oh, I've used apple water, I've used orange water, and it's infused the rest of my uh, bread with that flavour. Well, with a rice starter, it probably won't too much. First of all, rice is a fairly strong flavour in itself. But also, um, you're going to use so minimal amount of it that you, it possibly won't um, infuse the rest of your... Uh, um, the rest of your uh, dough with the flavour. Um, do say hello, or if you've got any questions, by the way, if you're watching, it's lovely to have you along this evening. Um, so, I, yeah, I like to keep it simple, just um, flour and water. And um, it hasn't gone volcanic, as you can see. It's, uh, it's fairly uh, minimal. Um, so hopefully that won't go everywhere. And um, that's not to say it won't. And you do have to think, well, think about storage uh, again when I do another live on, on uh, Tuesday. Um, but do um, think about that in your fridge. If you put it in your fridge to store it, it will still be active for quite a while. And you might find if you put it in too small a container that it will try to break free. And also it's giving off gas. So it's, 
there are some things to think about there in terms of making sure you store it properly. Um, but hopefully this recipe won't turn into a volcano if you wanted to try it again uh, at uh, Nutritious Deliciousness if you wanted to do that. All right, so that was all the questions I had. Um, and uh, I think we've done the refresh and we'll come back. I'll post some pictures tomorrow of what my final uh, starter looks like. It's pretty frothy. Um, it's pretty, uh, lots of bubbles, which is fantastic. Um, the next thing to do is to try and use it in a dough. Um, so, uh, fingers crossed that will, <laughs> that will work. Um, and um, I'll come back on Tuesday and uh, have a chat with you all about um, what I've been doing and um, um, how you can use it. So we're going to talk about kind of storing it and how to use your starter, which is the next thing, and working it around uh, a busy lifestyle because I don't believe that you have to kind of be a slave to the bread. It should be, it should be the other way around. It should just be able to fit around what you're already doing. So, uh, so yeah, check back tomorrow. I'll show you some pictures of the bubbles, hopefully. Um, and then uh, um, check back on Tuesday, probably about four o'clock. You can watch it on the replay. And if you're watching this on the replay, do let me know. Um, and if you're making a starter. Um, the other thing I will say is that if you do want to find out more about making sourdough and sourdough breads, um, that I do obviously run classes here in Epsom. So... If you're at all interested in taking a class, I'll put a link in the comments again. Um, I'm booking some classes up now in the autumn, and we bake a whole range of sourdough breads, rye, hybrid breads with yeast in as well. Um, we do uh, enriched doughs um, with, a, with a bit of milk in them. Talk about that. And we do a straight sourdough uh, white loaf as well. And we use up some recipes to use up sourdough discards. So if you have got starter left over and you don't want to keep it in your fridge, but you want to use it up, there are ways of doing that as well. So lots of different stuff. Um, so I'll post that, I'll post that link uh, into the comments and you can see it. Just do that. But yes, as I say, if you've got any questions, do let me know. But otherwise, I'll uh, go away and uh, let you uh, get on with your Sunday evenings. Um, I'm going to go off, have a bit of tea. Um, <laughs> although if you see my Instagram story today, you know I've had a massive Sunday lunch, so I don't really need anything else. Um, but I will go and have a nice evening. I'm going to go and watch uh, Victoria, I think, and chill out on the sofa. So i just end by saying if you'll have a lovely uh, Sunday evening and uh, thank you ever so much for watching. If you're watching on the replay, thank you ever so much and uh, do say hi. Otherwise, I'll speak again soon. Cheers.